Okay, today we're going to speak about King Cyrus the Great. This is a depiction of King Cyrus, an ancient sculptor. Um, and, you know, I, I, I call this message a, a king for the naysayers. For King Cyrus, he truly was a king for the naysayers. Awesome story um, behind King Cyrus. We're going to get into a bit of King Cyrus. Um, from the book of Ezra, chapter 1. All right, let's jump right in. Have okay, my first reader read Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, please. Now in the year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of Jephthah by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahuwah Elohim of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His Elohim be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. He is the Elohim, which is in Jerusalem. So, whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver, and with gold, and with goods, and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of Elohim that is in Jerusalem. Okay. Now, one of the first things I want to point, point out is uh, that King Cyrus, he done this in his first year. Now, he reigned for 30 years, but he did this in his first year. This was the, his first year as king that he done this. Okay? You know, second thing I want to point out is that Cyrus was not the king of Israel. He was not the king of Yahudah. He was the king of Persia. That said, he was a pagan king. Whoa. But this pagan king, it says concerning this pagan king, that Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Ha! That Yahuwah made him to make a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. And to put it also in writing. Thus saith of Cyrus, king of Persia, Yahuwah Elohim of heaven have given, me, have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. Whoa, that's deep. You know, now here it is, this pagan giving honor to the Most High El, to the El of Israel. Yeah. Not even being of Israel. Okay. Not even, you know, really associating himself with Israel in, in all actuality. But thus say Osiris, the king of Persia, Yahuwah Elohim of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He's not saying that Yahuwah just gave him the kingdom of Judah. Mm -hmm. But all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him in house at Jerusalem, which is in Yahuda. He then, therefore, called all his people, all the people um, of Yahuda, that claimed him to be their Elohim, and let them go to Jerusalem, which is in Yahuda, to build a house of Yahuda. You know, that's, that's an awesome thing. Now, that said, King Cyrus is one of the most important monarchs of, ancient, of the ancient world. Period. He's one of the most important monarchs of the ancient world. He reigned over the Persian Empire for 30 years and ruled the greatest empire the world had seen at that time. Yet the most amazing thing concerning his reign isn't the lands that he conquered during his reign, nor is it of his great exploits that he did, and he'd done some great ones. 
but it was the immutable fact that Yah's prophets prophesied his reign even before he was born. See, and, and this is why I call him the king for the naysayers, because he thereby proves the Elohim of the Bible. He proves that scripture is true. He proves that Yah is sovereign. See, not just sovereign over Israel or Yahuda, but sovereign over all the world. You know, so next time you have a a naysayer, you know, someone speaks against the word, you know, saying that, you know, this or that concerning the L we serve, you know, remember King Cyrus because he's proof that Yah is L over the world, not just over Israel or over Yahuda, but over the world as a whole. Let's take a look at this prophecy that was said concerning him. Now we read in chapter 1, that it was prophesied by the mouth of, mouth of Yermiyahu. But that prophecy didn't survive, you know, in the writings of Yermiyahu. But we do have a prophecy that survived of Yeshiyahu. And let me have my next reader read Yeshiyahu or Isaiah chapter 44 verses 24 through 28. Thus saith Yahuwah, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am Yahuwah that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that, frust that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that, com form that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited into the cities of Judah. Ye shall be built, and I will raise up and, de and decay places thereof. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. That saith to of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what Yah says. This is what Yah says. You know, I really like, I really like verse 26. I really like verse 26. It says that he confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited. And to the cities of Yahudah, ye shall be built. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Ha! Hallelujah. I just, I just really like that. Because, you know, Yah, he will work to perform. He will work to confirm the word of his servant and perform the counsel of his messengers. Hallelujah. There's another place that speaks of him not letting any of his servants' words fall to the ground. That's a yasome thing. That's a yasome thing. But check out what he says concerning Cyrus. He says, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built. And to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. That's awesome. Because hereby, King Cyrus is noted to be Yahuwah's shepherd. But guess what? As it turns out, Cyrus was, in fact, a shepherd and was even raised by a shepherd and his wife, which was entrusted. They were actually entrusted to kill him, <laughs> if you could believe that. They was actually entrusted to kill him, but instead of killing him, they raised him as their own. See, King Cyrus' grandfather was, was King Astyages, you know, and he was... He wasn't king over Persia. He was king over uh, the Medes, if I'm not mistaken. And he had a dream. And that, in that dream, he dreamt about his daughter. Um, and his daughter was pregnant. And, and this water came from his daughter's belly. And it went all over. It went all over the, the lands, all over his kingdom and, and all over Persia and, 
and, and it just was it was just flowing and he couldn't understand the meaning of the dream and so one of the wise men interpreted it for him and they interpreted it as saying that his daughter was going to have a child and that child was going to put an end to his to his his reign to his kingdom so therefore he sent out the decree to kill the child and he entrusted his, his trusty uh, servant by the name of Harpagus and told him to kill and bury Cyrus as soon as he was born. See, but of course Yah's hand was, was upon young Cyrus and Harpagus couldn't bring himself to kill the, the little baby. So he went and passed it off on the shepherd and his wife. And the shepherd and his wife, they couldn't bring themselves to kill the baby. And being with our child, they end up raising them as their own. You know, so he grows up truly as a shepherd. You know, so now this this is amazing. But when when Yes Yahu prophesied these things concerning Jerusalem and the temple and Cyrus, check this out: Jerusalem hadn't even been destroyed yet. They hadn't even went into captivity. That's the amazing thing. The temple hadn't even been destroyed. The city hadn't been taken. And it was like 200 years before King Cyrus would even be born. Mm -hmm. Now how yasum is that? Mm -hmm. That's yasum. That's nothing but a true ale can do that one. <laughs> You know, prophesy. Now, just imagine how they perceive this this prophecy. See, because here it is. That's just like here it is. We're we're here in Berkeley, and, and here it is. Someone coming in and talking about you know Berkeley will be rebuilt. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it now. It's not torn down. And talking about you know, a hey, this this building here will be rebuilt along with the city. And there's nothing wrong with the city. And the building is still standing. You know, but here it is. Y'all knew what held, what the future held for the city of Jerusalem and, and for the temple. Whereas other people didn't. So 200 years prior, this was prophesied. And it came to pass. You know, that is truly, yeah, you can't attribute it to anything else or anyone else. You know, and the awesome thing is, you know, that he done it through a pagan king. He done it through a pagan king. But check out what, um, what else he would say. Uh, but, oh, I forgot. I want to introduce you to something. This is called the Cyrus Cylinder. And it's in the British Museum over in London. Now, it's an important source of history for King Cyrus, um, concerning King Cyrus' reign, um, and it was discovered in 1879, and today it's, it sits in the British Museum. The cylinder is called the oldest charter or symbol of human rights, and therefore has been translated in all six official UN languages, with a replica of the cylinder being kept at the United Nations headquarters in New York and stands as proof that King Cyrus did in fact live and validates that he did in fact destroy the Babylonian Empire and return to Yahudim, to Palestine from their Babylonian captivity just as it was said that he would do in scripture. You know, this is, a, this is an awesome thing. But uh, I wanted to share with you the other part of Isaiah's other part of Isaiah's uh, prophecy. Just as a summation of what the Cyrus Cylinder would say, it says, um, here's a quote from it. I am Cyrus, king of the universe. Nabonidus, the king who did not fear me since the gods of foreign lands made permanent sanctuaries which are now dilapidated. I returned people to their lands and made provisions to rebuild. You know, and, and this is this is part of why he's 
he's called, you know, the scroll is called the oldest charter or symbol of human rights, you know, because it instilled the right to religion. You know, and, and he did this for, not only for Jerusalem, not only for Yahuda and Yer Jerusalem, but he done it for all those captives of all the lands he conquered. Mm -hmm. And there were many. You know, so they still utilize this this uh, model of, of, of governing over multiple peoples. And that's why it's in the United Nations. You know, now the other part of uh, Yeshayahu's prophecy concerning King Cyrus is found in Yeshayahu 45, 1 through 7. It says, Thus saith Yahuwah to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Now, hereby we learn that King Cyrus was a type of Messiah. Take note, it says his anointed. That word anointed is Mashiach. You know, and it's actually calling him, say, it's actually saying, thus say of Yahuwah to his Mashiach, to, to, to Cyrus, or to his Mashiach Cyrus. Now, King Cyrus is the only non-Israelite to ever be called a Mashiach in Scripture. So that's pretty significant in and of itself. But check this out. It goes on to say in verse 2, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou may knowest that I, Yahuwah, which call thee, which call thee by thy name, am Elohim of Israel. For Yaakov, my servant's sake, and for Israel, mine sake, I have even called thee by name. I have surnamed thee, even though thou hast not known me. See, and that's real important. That's a real important uh, point because it called his name Cyrus 200 years before he was born. And now here it is, the, the mom and the parents and those involved had no idea of this prophecy concerning Cyrus. Mm -hmm. See, they wouldn't even have known concerning this prophecy. They wouldn't have even have known. They had no idea when it was going to come about. Mm -hmm. They would have had no idea that this, this kid would have been that Cyrus. You know, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even have known to even call the kid Cyrus. Mm -hmm. See, because they didn't have the scriptures. They didn't have the prophecy. Mm -hmm. They didn't know Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. So that just really is a testament to how Yasum Yah really is. How sovereign he really is. Because here it is, he prophesied, he had his prophet prophesied 200 years prior to someone who was going to be born who wasn't even an Israelite, had no idea that the prophecy even existed concerning him until after he was born. You know, the parents had no idea, but yet they named him Cyrus. And he became the king of Persia. You know, then by that time, of course, Cyrus would have heard of the prophecy. He would have, he would have, um, you know, people would have been like, whoa, wait a minute. What you say the king of Persia's name was? Well, isn't that in scripture? Didn't Yeshayahu prophesy that? You know, and then it would have came to his attention. But can you imagine once that came to his attention? That's why that was the first thing that he did, was proclaim freedom to Yah's people. I mean, why wouldn't you? This guy, here it is, this L, through his prophet, prophesied that you were going to be born 200 years prior to you being born. So that means your mama didn't hear of the, hear the prophecy. Your, your mother or father didn't hear of it. Your grandparents didn't hear of it. Your great-grandparents didn't hear of it. Your great-great-great-grandparents didn't even hear of it. That's, that's Yasa. You know, that's proof that Yah is El of the universe. And he goes on to say, I am Yahuwah. There is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. 
Can you imagine reading this 200 years before you were born? How awesome is that? Could you actually imagine reading something concerning yourself a couple centuries, written a couple centuries before you were even born that that pertains to you. Here it is. You're the king of Persia. Your name is Cyrus. There's no M, M's or buts about it. Mm. Here it is. You conquering all these nations, you know, and can't nobody touch you. And here it is. You read. You read this. He says, "I am Yahuwah. There is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee, yes. though thou hast not known me." And you reading this, and you know I didn't know you. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west. That's the King James. It doesn't read uh, quite right. It actually should read more like, and they shall know from the rising of the sun to the setting in the west. It's actually speaking of the light of day and the darkness of night. That there is none beside me. I am Yahuwah and there is none else. And that's why he comes back in verse 7 and says, I form the light. Hence the rising of the sun and create darkness, the setting of it in the, in the west. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. Yes. How Yasum is that? Hallelujah. That is Yasum. Yes, hereby we learn that King Cyrus was to perform Yah's will by destroying the great Babylon Empire which he did in addition to conquering two other notable empires of that day. Not, not just countries, but empires. Even that of the Medes, his grandfather's empire, and the Lydians. And commanding that Jerusalem, the temple, be rebuilt. Did you know that before the 19th century, the naysayers didn't even believe that Babylon ever existed? But then it was found 70 feet beneath the earth. They was digging in the area where it was so, supposed to be, but they couldn't find it. So they figured it didn't, it didn't exist. They just didn't dig far enough. See, because as Yah said he would do concerning Babylon, so had he done. You know, and there are people that had talk about saying, you know, well, we're going to rebuild it as it was because it was a great city. You know, they had towers 288 feet high. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome even today, by today's standard. That's, that, you know, that's, 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 that's tall, you know. But they didn't find it because it was 70 feet under the earth. You have any idea what 70 feet is? I was just thinking some people may not have. But that's about the height of a seven-story building. Wow. So they had to dig down about the height or the depth of a 70-story building in order to find ancient Babylon. When Yah buries something, he buries it, doesn't he? You know, but they found it. And they found one of the gates, and they found emphatic proof, immutable proof that Babylon did in fact exist and that the Bible was true. And not only that, you know, that in conjunction with Cyrus Cylinder, you know, also collaborates the worst depiction of, of what happened. You know, and there's other ancient writings that spoke of King Cyrus because he was a he was a great king. And he had the largest empire that had ever been known to man up to that up to that his time you know so he was he was written about by you know many nations and he was a real fair guy you know no one really had anything bad to say about king Cyrus. you know even the people that he conquered he was kind to he allowed them to go back to their lands rebuild their cities you know serve their gods you know he was a real fair guy you know, so King Cyrus, he was, uh, he was quite a fellow. And the prophecy concerning him um, continues in verses 8 through 13 of uh, Isaiah or Yeshayahu 45. Come on, let's read it. Read. 
That's Yahoo 45, 8 through 13. Drop thou heaven so that the earth may be Yes. Now, now check that out. You know, Yah is speaking to, here it is. Can you imagine, again, this is just so awesome to me. Can you imagine reading something written about you 200 years previously, you know, and Yah introducing himself to you? You know, because that's basically what he's doing. He's introducing himself to him. He said, he's letting him know, I'm the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Ask me of the things concerning my, to come concerning my son, concerning the work of my hands. I have made the earth and created man upon it. Wow. And you took time to write me. <laughs> I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. You know, and King Cyrus was considered a righteous king. He was really a good guy. Because Yah was directing all his ways. And then he, he did set the bill. Yah city and, and he let go of the captives. And this is the thing. When he came into these lands and he conquered these lands, he not only let the captives go, he let them go for free. Not for price, no reward. Even as it was prophesied of him. You know, and the amazing thing is it was it was foretold that he would, you know, conquer Babylon and let Yah's people go. But the thing that was so awesome about it was he didn't fire not one arrow. He didn't shoot not one arrow. He didn't swing the sword not one time. When he came up with his troops up to Babylon, they had the gate open. <laughs> he walked right up in there and they surrendered without a fight. One of the greatest empires on the planet during that time. And they just let him walk right in and conquer him. You know, or submitted themselves to him without even a fight. Now, if that's not Yah, then what is? That's Yah. That just, just imagine, you know, I mean, even the little countries have fight in them. You know, you come start talking about taking in, they're ready to die for theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, here it is, one of the greatest empires on the planet during the time just opened up their gates and just let them have it. That's yeah. Okay, but today, we can deduce from Yeshua Yahoo's prophecy that King Cyrus was also a foreshadow of Yahushua. And that he was called for the sake of Israel to be Yah's shepherd. Even as the Messiah was called Yah's shepherd. He was called Yah's Mashiach. His Messiah. Even as Yahushua was the Mashiach. The anointed one. Even having Yah raise him in righteousness and directing all his ways. Even as, of course, Yahushua 
was raised in righteousness, and Yah directed all his ways. Even as he, Yah utilized King Cyrus to set the captives free, the Messiah also would set the captives free. And not for price, nor reward. And even as Yah used King Cyrus to rebuild Jerusalem and his temple, so is Yahushua also rebuilding Jerusalem and his temple. But it's just not natural Jerusalem and a natural temple. Let's take a look at Ezra 1 through the light of King Cyrus being a type of Messiah. We read in verse 1, again, um, that in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of Yahuwah, by the mouth of Yahu might be fulfilled, that Yahuwah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it in writing also. Well, Cyrus' name means the sun. How about that? Now, the sun, of course, speaks to what? What does the sun give? Light. So the sun speaks to the light. The Messiah was the light. Now, he, king Cyrus was the king of Persia. Persia just so happens to mean pure. So King Cyrus was the sun or the light, the king of pure. Or the king of the pure empire. Even as Yahushua is the light and also king of the pure empire. It says, Thus saith Cyrus, the king of Persia, Yahuwah, Elohim of heaven, have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. We know that Yahuwah is going to give Messiah, Yahushua, all the kingdoms of the earth. And just as he charged them to build and house in Jerusalem, which is in Yahuwah, so is our Messiah doing the same thing. You know, even as King Cyrus foreshadowed Yahushua, you know, Yahushua would do all the things that King Cyrus done. Let's take a look at uh, Malachi 4, 2, and 3. You know, for even as King Cyrus was, was um, Cyrus' name means the son, Yahushua was, is also called the son of righteousness. You know, even as King Cyrus was the son that was raised in righteousness, we read in Malachi 4.2 concerning the Messiah after King Cyrus was, uh, had, was born and died. It says, But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as cows of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, say of Yahuwah's Zavod. You know, and I think this may even have been, you know, um, parallel to likening Yahushua to King Cyrus. For even as Cyrus' name means the son, and he was raised in righteousness, you know, and it speaks of him having healing in his, in his wings. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't grab the picture of King Cyrus. There's a depiction of King Cyrus on one of the, uh, the walls of, of Persia and it depicts him on there with four wings you know you know so that was uh, you know that that could have this could have very well been an allusion to that you know I'm sure they would have known about that uh, carving on the wall or what have you but we also read in Luke 4, 16 through 21, it says, and speaking of the Messiah, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of Yeshayahu, or Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Ruach of the Adonai is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Adonai. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue was fastened upon him, and he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. 
You know, so even as King Cyrus was able to read in scripture concerning his ministry and what he would do, we see that Yahushua was able to, to go to scripture, even the same prophet, Yeshayahu, and see what was depicted of um, what he was to do, you know, and what was depicted of him before he even came. In Ezra uh, 1, 5 through 8, we read, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Yahudah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with all them whose spirit of Ruach Elohim had arranged to go up to build the house of Yahudah, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold with goods and with beasts and with precious things beside all that was willingly offered. Also Cyrus the king brought forth vessels of the house of Yahuwah, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did King Cyrus, king of Persia, bring forth by the hand of Mithreda, the treasurer, and numbered them to Sheshbazar, the prince of Yahudah. Now how about that? Not only did he restore unto, unto uh, Yahudah their land and, and allowed them to, to build their, their temple in the city, he even gave them the stuff that was taken. He gave them the treasures that was taken. You know, now who gives away money? He's even given them money to go and build the house. How awesome is that? You know, Mithridath means given of Mithra. And Sheshbazar means worshiper of fire. And it speaks of even those that King Cyrus of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithridath. Now, you know, I found that to be particularly interesting in relation to the Messiah. You know, and, and Messiah being a type of King Cyrus. You know, we see that the treasure of Yah's things was uh, a Mithrite to begin with, you know, and his name was Mithra that he was given of Mithra. And you, you just look at all the pagan customs that's in quote unquote Christianity, and most of them are due to Mithra worship. For Constantine, his position also entailed that he was the high priest of Mithras. And many of the pagan holidays that are celebrated by Christians today can be traced back to Mithras, the sun god. You know, and, you know, even some of the tales concerning Mithras are, are very similar to those concerning the Messiah. So, you know, I, I found that particularly interesting. And the prince of Yahudah was a worshiper of fire. You know, and of course, fire is, you know, symbolic for light. And we know who the light is. You know, so we see a worshiper of Yah in our actuality. You know, so even this written way back when is prophetic of Yahushua and his, his ministry. It goes on in 9 through 11 and says that this is the number of them, 30 charges of gold, 1,000 charges of silver, 9 and 20 knives, the basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, 1,000, all the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. These did Sheshbazar bring up with him of the captivity that were brought up from the Babylon unto Jerusalem. This wasn't no, this wasn't no, no, no light amount. This was, you know, this was a fortune. This was literally a fortune in silver and gold. You know, but even as King Cyrus was, you know, allowed the temple to be built and Jerusalem to be built, so also is Yahushua doing the same thing even now. Hence we read in 1 Peter 2, 1 through 8 about us being built into a temple. Have my next reader read First Peter chapter two verses one through eight, please.
Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that Adonai is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Elohim, precious, ye also as living stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua Messiah. Wherefore, also, it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elected, precious, and he that believeth him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe that he is precious, but unto them who, which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Hallelujah. I threw verses 1 and 2 in there just as a side note. And it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all, and all evil speakings, as, a newborn, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. You know, and just as a side note, you know, because we all are supposed to become as little children, little babes, and what we actually feed off of is the sincere milk of the word. You know, and as, as second... First Peter 2.2 2 says that we may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. You know, we need the milk of the word in order to grow. And what is the milk of the word? You know, Hebrews 5 speaks to the Torah. Speaks to Torah as being the milk of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, those, those, those first things that was given. Mm -hmm. But back to the analogy at hand of Messiah building up um, the temple rebuilding the temple, we, we see that Peter says, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Elohim and precious, ye also are as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahushua Messiah. See, he is building the temple. You know, and they were building the temple that's what Messiah was doing. He was building a temple made without hands even when he walked the earth. That's what his apostles were continuing to do even after he was gone and as they walked the earth until they died. And that's what those who came after them were supposed to do, continue to do. And in all actuality, that's what we are supposed to do. You know, it says in verse 7, unto, unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. You know, that's the foundation stone. Yahush, our Messiah and King. In Revelations 21, we read, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, Yochanan, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Elohim out of Hashemayim, or out of the heavens. Now here it is, we see that there was, in fact, a uh, Jerusalem being rebuilt. And when it's done, it's going to come down, you know, when Yah says it's time, it's going to come down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be with them, and be their Elohim. And Elohim shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. You know, praises to a king. You know, he's doing the work. You know, simply put, the story of Israel during King Cyrus speaks to the ministry of Yahushua and can be used to understand how, how things will look and come about. 
such as the altar being set up first, uh, the altar being set up first and the sacri sacrifices started prior to the foundation of the temple being laid, you know, which actually happened. And the building of the temple will come to an abrupt stop, you know, after the foundation has been laid by force of the enemy. You know, uh, the first parts we, um, that I read, uh, the building of the temple, the foundation being, of the temple being laid, you know, we find that in chapter 3. You know, the first uh, parts uh, was in 1 and 2. And the building of the temple will come to an abrupt stop after the foundation has been laid by the force of the enemy. It's found in chapter 4. Then the two witnesses will come and prophesy to Yah's people. And it'll be those, it'll be those Israelites that were born in confusion. But saw Elohim and Yahushua that will return to the building of the house of Elohim. You know, speaking of us, you know, those of us who were born in confusion, we're born in a type of Babylon, even as those during King Cyrus' time was born in a type of Babylon, and those were the ones that were used to rebuild Jerusalem in the temple. You know, likewise, those of us now today, you know, we've heard of Yah and, and, and we've heard of his ways and things of that nature, but, you know, we're in a type of confusion. You know, and just as they were in a literal city of confusion, we're in a type of confusion in the world today. And Yahushua is doing the work, and he's going to use us to do that work. Those who were born in confusion, but even though we're born in confusion, but seek him and Yahushua. Those of us who, who, are, who does that, who seek him and Yahushua with all our hearts, you know, he will return to the building of the house of Elohim. He'll utilize us to rebuild the house of Elohim. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Hasatan and his companions come along with spiritual gifts and will come up against those of us that's trying to uh, finish the temple and try to prevent us from finishing it. Mm -hmm. That's found in chapter 5. Then, but Yah will strengthen his people and bestow upon them spiritual gifts of their own that they might finish the work, that they will accomplish a uh, and they will accomplish this work. They will fully build the temple a little before spiritual Passover and unleavened bread take place. You know, there is going to be a spiritual Passover and unleavened bread. You know, and that's depicted in chapter 6. And then there will be a great time of teaching repentance and conversion. And that's found in chapters 7 through 10. And then it kind of just rolls over into the book of Nehemiah that deals with the actual building of the city. You know, so that's just the summation of, of Ezra. But, you know, know for a certainty that Yah is at work and that he is rebuilding his temple but not made with man's hands. He's rebuilding a city that's not made with man's hands. It was said of, of Abraham that he was wandering the land looking for a city that Yah had built. And, you know, this is a depiction of that city, new, even New Jerusalem, in which the walls are raised, you know, that, that will never be penetrated by the enemy, you know. Just an awesome, be an awesome time, a Yah some time. Yah is truly with us until the end. Those who trust in Him. That's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing unto you.